Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to my homestead. I'm Kay here in my kitchen and I'm starting a new series today. Should I say reinterpreting or interpreting my mother's recipes. Now my mother was a wonderful cook and she was a casserole queen as many, many mothers were back in the 60s, 70s, 80s. <laughs> It was just very popular to have a beautiful casserole to take over, you know, to a gathering. Today's Thanksgiving, but I am making sweet potato souffle. Now this is a recipe that I have wanted to share for a long time, and I'm just now getting around to doing it. These are written on just regular note cards in my mother's handwriting, and they're a little short on description. They've got the ingredients, but it's a little short on description, so I had to really interpret the first time I made this. Uh, last week I made it and I doubled the recipe, so I had to really kind of interpret cooking times and all of that. And of course I do things a little different than my mother did. She always used margarine. It was very popular. I'm using coconut sugar instead of brown sugar. You know, we didn't have unrefined and low glycemic certified fair trade organic brown coconut sugar when I was growing up. We had brown sugar, <laughs> and so which was just sugar that, you know, they put brown coloring in or something. <laughs> so I'm making a few little switches, but this is a delicious dish, and I highly recommend this for a holiday because it has a nice topping. You can add even more of a topping because toppings were always used on top of casseroles back in the day. Now I am using, of course, sweet potatoes that I grew because I grew another 150 or so pounds of sweet potatoes this year. And I grew three varieties, white, the traditional orange color, and also purple. And last time I put half and half orange and purple and the whole thing came out purple. So we'll see if this one purple will outweigh this big orange. We don't know what color it's going to wind up being. But this was such an unusual sweet potato. I had to save it for something special and show it to you. <laughs> it looks like, I don't know what it looks like. It looks like an animal, doesn't it? It's so amazing because normally this would break off and you wouldn't get the whole thing out. But I, Randy was here and I said, wait, 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 I want to excavate this entire thing. This was pointing straight down in the ground. It was laying like this. So when I got to here, I went, wait, 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 I don't want to break it here. And so I wanted to get it all out intact. And I did. Also, you might notice these are very dirty. And if you want your sweet potatoes to preserve longer, I found that you just leave the dirt on until you're ready to use them. You cook the sweet potatoes, and while you're cooking the sweet potatoes, you get together, it calls for one and a quarter cup of white sugar. And I'm cutting back the sugar a little bit because there's also sugar in the topping. <laughs> and so I am using one cup. Now I am going to double this because I'm going to a gathering with 13 people. So I'm going to double this, this recipe anyway. So I'm going to just give you the basic amounts and I think that would be just a nine, eight or nine inch square baking dish because by doubling it, I went to this size. So this is the size I'll be doing today with the double recipe. And so you, use, you peel and quarter the potatoes two to three cups and I used three or I'm doing six and you cook in a small amount of water. Here's one of those interpret the, uh, the directions. A small amount of water. Well, what do you consider a small amount of water? I put a small amount of water in the pan and cook them the first time and I thought, and then what you do is you beat the sweet potatoes in that cooking water, which it doesn't say here, but that's what you do. You don't pour the water off, you, 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 you beat it together. So that's why she said, that's why I interpreted, she said small amount of water. 
She didn't say steam the potatoes and then cream them. No, she said cook in a small amount of water with salt, and that's up to you, uh, till tender. Cream to thin consistency. And last time I actually poured off a little water because I thought if I thin that, it's going to be like lit, just pure out liquid. It'll never get thick. It's got to get thick. And then you add with a spoon. She doesn't mention that you beat these together, but I thought, okay, if it's white sugar and it's uh, margarine, butter, eggs, and milk, in that order, I thought, well, okay, I'm going to start with the sugar and the butter and add the eggs and then the milk. That's what I did last time and it worked out. So you beat that up in a bowl and then you put your potatoes in with it, you mix that together. You can adjust the sugar as you like it. One and a quarter cup white sugar, two whole eggs beaten, three quarters of a stick of butter or margarine, one cup of milk, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Mix all these well with a spoon, and then you pour it into your greased casserole, and then you bake it at 400 degrees she said for 20 minutes. Now when I doubled it, it was still too, I mean it wasn't even formed and I knew that I could never get a topping on top of that if I took it out in 20 minutes. So for doubling the recipe, I wound up cooking it for almost 40 minutes. So you're going to want to watch that. When you start to see, you'll see it, it bubbles from the side and then it started to get, it, it works its way in getting solid. And so obviously if you have a pan that's uh, quite a bit smaller, it's going to work in faster than it does in this long pan. And then while that's baking, then you mix together the topping, which is just, once again, same amounts, three quarters of a stick of butter, and a half a cup of light brown sugar, and a half a cup of broken pecan pieces. And then you mix these together, and she said mix, so I'm, I interpreted that to mean mixer, using the mixer to mix them together because, you know, you, when you make cookies, you always cream your butter and your sugar together until it comes together. And then I added the pecans. And then, of course, she adds, you crush three quarters cups of cornflakes and sprinkle over the top. You return to the oven, 400 for 10 minutes. So I just left off the cornflakes and then I just put the topping on. And what I wound up doing is because the topping is, you know, it's, it's not thin. It's not hard enough to like spread it. So I just dolloped it on. Every two inches I put a dollop. And then when it gets back in the oven, it, you know, the butter melts and it all spreads out. So it all worked out great. And so now let's go through it and let me show you how we do it. I'm going to peel and quarter the sweet potatoes, wash them, peel and quarter the sweet potatoes, and get them set up for cooking on the stovetop. Okay, I've got my sweet potatoes cleaned, peeled, quartered, and now they are cooking in a small amount of water. Okay, I am doubling the recipe, but the recipe itself calls for one and a quarter cup of white sugar and three quarters of a stick of butter or margarine. So I'm going to cream this together. Okay, that kind of went everywhere. I'm just going to put in the one teaspoon of nutmeg and the one teaspoon of vanilla. a little smoother consistency last time. I think that butter was colder. But it doesn't matter because it's all going to meld together in the uh, oven. Okay, we're just going to wait for the sweet potatoes. Our sweet potatoes are tender. And now we are going to mix them with the mixer to a thin consistency with the little bit of water that's in there.
You see, even though that was two thirds orange and one third purple, it really gives it a purple cast, purple color. And now we're just going to add our mixture. Okay, that looks good. <laughs> the butter that was separated just blended right in in the heat. Okay, I have a greased casserole ready for the potato mixture. Now this goes into a 400 degree oven for somewhere between 20 and 40 minutes. You just want to see it kind of start to cook, you know, to be solid on the top. You don't want it still just completely loose, jiggly like that. Okay, while that's cooking, we are going to cream our brown sugar and butter. And I'm going to try to not be quite so messy this time. Now you could just fold this in with your wooden spoon, but I'm just going to put it on a low speed and try to do it. So you see this is very thick and you're, you just rip that top of that open if it wasn't cooked over. While that's cooking, I hope you'll take a moment to subscribe to my channel where I share recipes from the garden, easy recipes, and now recipes that my mother gave me. She is in a memory care unit in Nashville. She has dementia. She doesn't remember anything really of her life at all at this point. So it is so nice to be able to share something of hers. There's so much I could share. I have so many things she made here. Let me know if you'd like to see some of them in the comments below. And I know I could go online and find 10 recipes for sweet potato souffle in about five minutes that would have very detailed instructions uh, as opposed to what's on here. But you know, I just wanted to see if I could take what she gave me and make a delicious dish and we'll see. It was really good last week. Let's see if this comes together. I, I'm not sure why the, the, the butter separated. Maybe I beat it too long, but you know, when you're trying to film and make a recipe and, and look good and, and make it work right and everything, sometimes it's just not so easy. The camera's in the way. <laughs> oh. I don't have a studio like Martha Stewart where she's got cameras mounted from the ceiling and you're looking right down on the pot and you have hands-free cooking. Now, the camera's like right here, you know, and you're just trying to beat around, <laughs> beat around and get it and get it looking good. So hopefully, hopefully this will all come out and you'll please let me know if you try this recipe right from my instructions and leave me a comment below. When she first went into this assisted living, she uh, claimed this golden chair, uh, this golden couch that was in the lobby. And it was sort of in a main walkway, so there are two wings, and if you walked in uh, to go either way, you would see her sitting there. <laughs> and she called that her office. And she took 
a notepad and paper, and she was determined to write letters to my brother, well, specifically to my brother. Uh, she wrote me a few also, but uh, I think she was just trying to hang on to be, being able to do it. But the big problem was macular degeneration, which re there's really no cure. You know, they can give you shots and they can do very, she's too old for any of that um, now. And so she just, she could express herself, her thoughts, but she couldn't get it on paper because she couldn't see the lines. And so everything would drift down and run together and it would just become a jumble. So she stopped writing. So I'm so glad I have this, and I have had this for at least 25 years, at least. And, uh, and I have others to share, uh, so I hope I get a chance to make a whole collection, and I hope you'll be here when I do. Please subscribe, like, and share the video, and we'll just wait a few more minutes until, until the sweet potatoes start forming up on the top. You've got to have that skin on the top before you can drop this topping on. So, hold on, we'll be right back. You see how it's bubbling around the edges? So it's working its way in, it's about a half an inch in. <laughs> Set is the word I was looking for before. You know, you want this, the top to have set so you don't scrape it off when you're trying to put the, the topping on. So, See if you can see that. You'll see some sweat bubbles there. Let's see if I can get that right there. Here's my topping. It's still very, you know, solid, so I'm just going to do like that. She did use the word spread the topping on, but that is so tender, I know it'll rip it apart. And this will serve the same purpose when the butter melts. It smells so good. Okay, so now this is going to go for 10 minutes at 400. The temperature dropped down a little bit uh, when I opened it, so I'm going to give it like 10, 12 minutes. I'm going to let that sit there for a minute until it stops bubbling, and then I'll try to take it out. Oh, doesn't that look good? I think I just have to taste it. Mm. Mm. Let's try it. Mm. Oh! You see the last time I, I made it the night before and I didn't want to I didn't want to put a mark in it so I hadn't even tasted it when I took it to the last dinner and I didn't warm it up. Oh my it's so much better warmed up. Mm. It's like a combination with with uh, like a like a It tastes like pecan pie with sweet potato filling. <laughs> it's so good. I hope you try it. Thanks so much for watching. Like the video on your way out. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video. This could be messy. <laughs> see how this goes. <laughs> Yeah, that didn't go well. <laughs>